Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. And yes, you guys did this to me. I was not planning on seeing Speak No Evil. Well, we kind of were. We, we had an invite to a press screening, schedules didn't line up, and I just said, you know what? I didn't include this on my films to watch out for for September just because the trailer has been beaten to death. I know I'm not the first person to say that, but dear God, they have just gone overboard with the marketing of this movie. Ugh, it was just exhausting, and I was tired of it. I, I legitimately was just like, I don't care. I want to just get through the rest of September, get into spooky season. I got a lot of work I'm working on. But then some reviews came out. Friends of mine, people I follow, they said, hey, Speak No Evil's pretty fucking good. So you should check it out. And you know what? I left it up to you guys. Put a poll out there. You all sent me to the theater to see the remake of Speak No Evil. And now I'm going to talk about it. And first things first, of course, as I said at the start there, this is a remake. And I have not seen the original. I meant to watch it. I just never got around to it. And I just thought, you know what? If I'm going into this, I'm just going to go see it blind. I'm going to see it without knowing anything about that original film. And I will circle back to the OG. So now that we've got all of that out of the way, how am I feeling walking out of Speak No Evil? I got to say, I was pretty impressed but not like blown away by this film. I think that this movie had such low expectations from myself and many others that I went in just expecting this to be a dumpster fire. And it's not a dumpster fire, no. It's definitely entertaining. But I, this movie is, at the end of the day, if I'm being completely honest, painfully average. Now let's run a couple of positives up for the film. First things first, yes, James McAvoy is an actor that I, as well as many others, uh, enjoy. Absolutely love his performances. He was fantastic in Split, and he is just somebody that I'm always excited to see on the big screen. And he does not disappoint here as Patty. No, he is energy. If there is anything that you can use to put by that term in the dictionary, if you want to put a picture, a video, an image... It's James McAvoy in this film. The dude just radiates all of this gusto and ego, and I just found him to be so enthralling. From every scene, from when he's being sympathetic to when he's being downright rotten. Uh, with that said, I also found myself really enjoying uh, Mackenzie Davis. I thought that she was also somebody that actually quite surprised me, because early on in the film, I did didn't care for her character. I thought that she was being very one note. I didn't think that they were going to really do much with her. And if I'm being completely honest, the family in general there. But hey, I was proven wrong. They actually did develop her pretty well. And once we kind of get things moving a little bit quicker towards the middle of the film, she actually starts getting into some situations that quite surprised me. There are a couple of sequences where she has to get kind of raw and kind of emotional, and I pretty much bought everything that she sold me. As far as the rest of the cast goes, I did enjoy their performances. I think that the children do a relatively good job, especially once they're given things to do. Unfortunately, there is a lot of this movie where they're just kind of, you know, there. They're just kind of in the background. They don't necessarily feel like they're as integral to our story. Uh, but then you have people like Scoot McNary, who is somebody that I really like and I think is a pretty underrated actor. Now, his character, I understand, is supposed to be a bit more reserved and a bit more meek, especially when you're going up against James McAvoy in this, but I did find some of that reservedness to be hard to believe, especially towards the third act of this movie. He just makes a couple of decisions and does a couple of things that I just did not buy. I felt like even though he is kind of this type B character where he's just sort of supposed to be a bit more unsure of himself, that he would have at least stepped up in a couple of these final moments. I mean, especially if he loves his family. It just kind of left me feeling a bit more sour with him by the end of it. 
As for the directing of this film, I found it to be pretty competent. Now, this is from James Watkins, who I was pretty familiar with his work on Eden Lake, a movie that I think is very brutal and I really enjoyed. Um, he hasn't done anything that's blown my mind since, though. I know he did The Woman in Black, that Daniel Radcliffe movie from, like, many years ago, but... I didn't necessarily love that, and I don't remember much of it, if I'm being completely honest, but I did see that he had some very great visual flair here, some really nice, sharp storytelling when it came to just how he composed shots and how he decided to give us information, which I thought was really well done. Again, I have not seen the original, so I don't know how much of that is being lifted from the original film as opposed to this. But as far as everything that I can tell, I think that he's a very competent filmmaker and I did enjoy uh, a lot of the ways that he decided to frame this story. There's a lot of back and forth and I know that some of that comes into the script, but there's a lot of really great visual cues that go into this. There is a sequence involving a door with kind of this like stained glass where it's a blink and you'll miss it kind of moment. And I think it's really creepy and cool and I, I enjoy that a lot but for me I think the thing that really set me over the edge as my enjoyment level with this movie is the pacing for it being almost a two-hour film I really felt like the story moved I don't know why I think again seeing that trailer so many times may have you know kind of left me in a bad spot with thinking this movie was gonna drag feeling like I've seen the whole thing but I, I really found this movie to be paced very well. It, it doesn't waste time. It really likes to keep things going. And there are multiple times when you're shaking your head at decisions characters are making and they don't even give you a second to breathe. You just have to kind of push through it and cringe and wince at everything that's coming after. And I think that that is super, super well done. I got to give him all the credit in the world here because that is something that's hard to pull off without becoming kind of overly corny. And I think that he absolutely sells that here. Now, what are some of my dislikes with this movie? Now, I opened up by saying this thing is painfully average. And I only mean that because this does kind of devolve into a film that we've seen time and time again. Now, hearing what I've heard about the original movie's ending, I hear that it's shocking, it, it is just tragic and depressing, and really, really hard uh, that most American audiences probably would not have enjoyed. Now, I do look forward to seeing what that is and giving a comparison, because this, to me, if this is anything like that ending, which I've heard it's not, I would have just been like dumbfounded because this just really devolves into something again. We've seen this a lot. There are entire films dedicated to this kind of an ending and I just found it to be entertaining and exciting at times. I think again the performances and the characters really elevate that there but by the end of it it's just we've seen it it's average it's something that's you know not going to knock your socks off or anything it's not going to blow your mind you're going to walk out of this film and at least feel satisfied but are you going to remember it is it not just going to kind of put itself on the shelf with other scenes or endings that you've seen a hundred times not really it's not doing anything that's shocking it's not doing anything that's going to really stick with me and i just found that to be kind of a big letdown which again is odd because it was fun it was fun at least the 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 journey to get there was enjoyable but it's just not impressive it's not something that i think lives up to what this story's trying to tell but really on the whole i can't have that many complaints for speak no evil surprisingly i think that this is probably the most competent blumhouse movie we've gotten this year um, it's not breaking the mold, it's not doing anything impressive as I stated before, but it is solid, it is entertaining, it's a nice thriller, and I think that this is something that many people will sit down, watch, and enjoy. If anything, this has just encouraged me to go and seek out the original Speak No Evil to see if maybe that's a little bit more up my alley, but I don't think this is offensive. When it comes to films that are foreign films being remade for an American audience, this isn't the worst that it could have been. This isn't what I thought it was going to be when I saw that trailer. But, I don't know. I, I just think that, again, did we need it? 
no, I don't ever think that we need an American remake of a foreign film, especially when the foreign film only came out in 2022. And from what I have been told by my buddy Evan, it's like still mostly in English. There's a few subtitles here and there. So I don't know what motivated it, what held it back uh, from really taking over and just being the main one. But now we have this and surprisingly, I, I have to give Blumhouse their flowers when they do it. They didn't fuck this up entirely. On that front, big props um, on anything else. It, it's fun. Check it out this weekend, maybe, if, if you're interested. Or I would say away for streaming. That's probably the safest bet. Worth a watch is where I'm sitting with this one. So let me know down below, guys. Are you interested in Speak No Evil? Is this something that you've been looking forward to? Am I way off base? Or are you kind of sitting right there with me? Not the worst. Not the best. But hey. I'm happy to do it for you guys. I'm happy to give you my opinion. I appreciate that there are people out here who actually care what I have to say about spooky movies. Um, other than that, hit this like button on this video if you guys want to get this thing up there. We really appreciate all the support. And yeah, got a lot of great stuff on the horizon. Many big plans for October. Splatterthon's going to be crazy. And just next week, we are starting Fantastic Fest coverage. Lots of films in our inbox right now. Lots of stuff I'm excited to talk about. Lots of interviews coming down the pipeline. So stay prepared. It's going to get wild. And yeah, guys, that'll wrap it up here. So until next time, I'm Dylan Newell. And remember, stay scared. Do the hard shit, gonna do it live. Press Splattercast, kick it every day they live. Splatter, 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 splatter.